Hi everyone, this is Sean with the Western Mass team of the Mass Support Network here with your COVID-19 update for Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. So uh, we're starting to come out of the period of irregular data from Thanksgiving. Uh, by the end of the week, we should have a clearer picture of exactly where we are here in the United States. But uh, worldwide, we saw 43 million new cases in the last week. That's up about 300,000. Uh, we had kind of plateaued worldwide for a little bit, but now we're back on the uptick. Here in the United States, uh, we saw uh, 1.4 million new cases in the last week uh, with an increase of 200,000 over last week. So most of the worldwide increase is just coming from us here at home. Massachusetts, we saw almost uh, 33,000 in uh, new cases in the last week, which is our, our biggest jump since the very beginning. Uh, in terms of deaths uh, worldwide, uh, 76,000 people died from COVID-19 in the past week, which is an increase of 6,000 over the week before. In the United States, 15,000 people died, which was uh, about 4,000 more than the week before. And here in Massachusetts, uh, we saw 287 people die from COVID-19 in the last week. So during the last, uh, well, you can see right here uh, in all these charts here, uh, exactly where the, the bump from Thanksgiving was, where we dropped down for a couple of days and everything ticked back up, both in uh, tests, in cases, uh, and also in reported deaths. Uh, but if you look out the seven day average, which is a more resilient metric as it takes the last seven days, averages them together, which is the solid line each of these charts, uh, you can see where we've kind of bounced back a bit more uh, to de data irregular irregularities. And the seven day average for every metric is now at an all time high. Uh, that is more deaths across the country than even in the worst days in April. Uh, and also, of course, hospitalizations is one uh, metric that uh, is not affected by holidays as much. And you can see we are at an all time high there as well, not just on the seven day average of hospitalizations, but in the current full total of people in hospitals right now in the United States. Uh, looking at uh, where uh, the pandemic is taking off uh, by population, this chart shows the four census regions of the United States. Uh, and actually, uh, the Northeast is showing uh, the most uh, growth right now. Uh, by population, we have the second most cases. Now, obviously, uh, we are the smallest of these regions. So that is going to uh, make our numbers higher with a uh, lower number of absolute cases. But again, in a smaller population, it works out to be the same. Uh, the Midwest has actually tapered off some, although you can see where the uh, Thanksgiving drop-off has affected them more than the other states. Uh, but they are, maybe they're at an uptick, maybe they're at a plateau. We'll see more uh, in the coming days. Uh, but it's also important to note that uh, every other region in the country is at an all-time high for cases. Uh, and when we look at this too, remember as well that just because the other regions are more doesn't mean we've got big uh, cases in our, uh, our own neck of the woods. Uh, Connecticut is uh, currently the yesterday was the highest uh, state for new cases per million people. And you can see where this really hits some of the le least populous states uh, the hardest, like Wyoming there, uh, very high. Uh, but again, remember that uh, even a much smaller number in California is still a huge number of people. So when we look at hospitalizations, they're on the rise in most of the country there. You can see those dark blue places are things where hospitalizations are increasing uh, over where they were two weeks ago. Uh, and there's kind of a, almost a, a series of, of rings there in the middle where uh, the upper Midwest uh, is actually dropping off a little bit. It was the hardest hit before. And then there's sort of a layer around the outside where things are holding steady. And then the rest of the country is getting uh, more and more people in hospitals. Uh, and it remains to be seen if perhaps uh, the Midwest will continue this trend of leveling off. As you can see there, it's, it's more or less flat and perhaps even dropping down a little bit there while the rest of the country is increasing. Uh, and maybe that's just that the virus has kind of burned itself out running through the, the population that was uh, vulnerable there. And uh, it's, there's just not as many people left to infect uh, who are 
uh, vulnerable to the disease. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the south and the uh, west are also at all time highs for hospitalization and we're here in the northeast, we are steadily climbing. Uh, and for the final metric, of course, uh, deaths uh, everywhere but the Northeast uh, is uh, seeing uh, all-time highs for deaths. And uh, that's something to be aware of too, even in the Midwest where hospitalizations are hopefully falling, uh, there is still a period where hospitalizations are falling and deaths are rising. Uh, there's the way the, the disease progress uh, works that we will uh, see deaths for a while. It's just when the hospitalizations drop off, that doesn't mean the deaths are going to drop off instantly as well. Uh, and you can see from the charts, the lines there that we are probably going to see a bit more in the coming days, uh, especially if we get a renewed surge from Thanksgiving, uh, as most of us are expecting. So moving into developments, of course, the big news is uh, this morning, uh, the UK began its first uh, deployment of the Pfizer vaccine. I also mentioned Russia on the list because they've also uh, been doing vaccine deployments on a large scale. Of course, theirs have not completed a stage three trials. We don't know exactly how effective they are. Uh, there are some early reports saying that they're on par with some of the ones that we've seen over here, but we also don't know about the safety profile there either. Uh, but uh, this morning, uh, the first shot was given in the UK to a woman from Inniskillen, Northern Ireland. Uh, and among the first people given was uh, actually a man with the actual name William Shakespeare, uh, making sure that uh, England can uh, keep their literary heroes vaccinated first. Of course, people who are getting these vaccines do not get full protection until after they've gotten the second uh, administration, which will be about three weeks later. Um, but now uh, on the home front, uh, the FDA uh, is convening their panel on Thursday about vaccine approval for the, vac the Pfizer vaccine that uh, the UK has approved. As I mentioned last week, the United States uh, FDA approval is a little bit more rigorous than the uh, UK's. So that's why it's moving a little bit more slowly. They do a lot more independent review than the UK does uh, instead of taking the company's own analysis and going from that. But uh, we could have a actual emergency use authorization vaccine approved by next couple of days, possibly even the end of the week, we'll see. Uh, and then of course, a second one running shortly behind that. Uh, also, uh, incoming uh, President-elect Joe Biden has uh, named a new head of the CDC uh, for to take uh, office in January, that is uh, Rochelle Walensky from uh, Massachusetts General. So it's always just kind of exciting to see uh, someone who is uh, both local to Massachusetts taking on this role and also someone who is uh, a, a very experienced and respected scientist, uh, worked a lot with uh, HIV and put out a lot of uh, papers uh, about COVID in the last couple of years, in the last couple of months. And uh, there's a lot of excitement about her appointment uh, to the CDC uh, from the uh, medical community. Uh, finally, also uh, the FDA approved a at-home test that tests for both COVID and the flu. So if you have uh, respiratory symptoms, you can take one test to tell you which one of the two it is, which is a great thing to differentiate. Uh, and it's an at-home test, but this is one again that you uh, take the test at home, you, you swab your own mouth or nose, uh, you put it in a vial in a prepaid envelope and you send it off to a lab to be assessed. It's not something you'll get the results with at home. Of course, with any at-home test, uh, there is of course the increased possibility for user error uh, because the people taking tests at home are not trained medical professionals. So it is quite easy to swab yourself poorly and get a false negative result. So looking at our vaccines uh, here, there are still new projects uh, entering the uh, even the early phases uh, all the time, but uh, we should now look be looking for those last columns to start uh, changing as uh, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines uh, reach uh, FDA approval in the next couple of days, we hope. And uh, for our stats, uh, you can always go to the COVID tracking project and make some of your own graphs like the ones we used earlier. New York Times is a very clear uh, tracker for cases and deaths. And of course, mass.gov has all the Massachusetts information. For more from the Mass Support Network, you can find us on our website or on social media. And remember, wear your mask, wash your hands, and we'll be here if you need us.
stay safe.